Okay, so today we have The Stranglers and Dagenham Dave. So I did on Friday, which today is Monday, uh, I did Morrissey and Dagenham, Dagenham Dave, my goodness. And uh, I thought, well, I did hear about this song, uh, you know, having the same title as that one. So I thought I should, you know, do it. And since it's Monday or whatever, I thought, all right, let's do it, you know, back to back. So here we go. Dagenham Dave uh, from The Stranglers. And uh, let's see what's going on. See what, you know, the story is. And let's just go. himself. Strange feelings did he feel there? Strange people did he meet there? Angry sounds did he hear there? Like the howling of bulls. I'm not gonna cry. I bet he hit that water high. I'm not gonna cry. I bet he hit that water All right, so Dagenham Dave by The Stranglers. You know, coming into this, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what the song was going to be about. But then, you know, listening to uh, the lyrics uh, that, I guess, uh, J.J. Burnell, uh, I think that's how you say it, Burnell, I guess. Um, anyway, um, he, that he was singing, uh, yeah, I, I saw, I was just like, is this a true story? Because, you know, talking about jumping off a bridge and all this stuff. And uh, he hit that water high, and I was just like, oh, Geez, this is kind of a <laughs> a sad, unfortunate tale. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway, um, Dagenham Dave. Uh, I guess I'll talk about, you know, more about him in a minute. But I just wanted to say, uh, Hugh Cornwell, uh, who I, I think last time I listened to The Stranglers, he was the lead singer. But here, he was only on guitar. And like I said, uh, Jean-Jacques Burnell was on uh, bass and vocals, lead vocals. And just, I mean, that friggin', I don't even, I don't, not raspy, but, you know, just has a... Uh, an old voice kind of a thing it's just I don't know he has such a heaviness and uh I mean yeah it's just I don't know <laughs> it's just like yeah I don't heavy uh it sounds like he 
kind of smoked a pack of cigarettes before the thing. I don't before he recorded. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just it. Just, I mean, you can't miss the voice. Uh, kind of deep as well. Anyway, and uh, Dave Greenfield on keyboards and vocals as well, because there was uh, some back vocals in there as well. Uh, and then Jet Black on drums and percussion. And uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, really what it comes down to here, though, like, I, you know, I love the music. And like I said, uh, I think it was the keyboard or whatever, because I do know that uh, Dave Greenfield here was quite the, uh, you know, the maestro on the keys. And, you know, whether it was an organ or, yeah, keyboard, whatever, he could do it. And uh, so I really enjoyed, you know, his work. Uh, but with Dagenham Dave, uh, <laughs> I was looking up here because there was a story. And I don't know who this, it, there's a article on Google, whatever. Um, and it just talks about, you know, the story behind the song Dagenham Dave from the album No More Heroes. And it's just, a you know, a, you know, some paragraphs or whatever. I don't know who it was. Maybe somebody from the band or whatever. Or maybe this wasn't, you know, the album uh, that talked about who Dave was, but either way it goes on. And I did read some of it, um, just talk about who Dave was. And apparently Dave, uh, it said that the band met Dave in 1976, the summer of 1976, and that the Stranglers basically weren't, you know, they were trying, you know, to become a big band. Uh, and Dave saw them and saw something in them and wanted to, you know, he knew that they were going to be big. He wanted them to get big or whatever. Um, and then I guess by the time, uh, you know, the Sex Pistols and, uh, you know, the Damned, it says here, uh, you know, those kind of other big punk bands came around in like 76, 77, uh, the Stranglers began to get bigger. And then uh, apparently they got more fans and then he began to get kind of jealous, I guess. And, uh, you know, he picked a fight with one of the bands, uh, what was the, the Finchies or something like that? Hold on. The Finchley Boys. Uh, anyway, it says that Dave picked a fight with them. Uh, he got, like, beat up, and uh, it was a fight that nobody won, I guess they said. And uh, this all happened when the Stranglers were on stage, you know, doing their thing. And uh, basically, yeah, Dave was just kind of envious. That's what it says. And then later on, his wife uh, would leave him. Uh, apparently, Dave, he had... Uh, 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 he had some kind of disorder, bipolar disorder, I think it said there. Um, so yeah, and it's, you know, he, when he became drunk, sometimes he would become obnoxious. Uh, and so, sometimes he was just, you know, hard to, uh, you know, be around or whatever. So anyway, since his wife left him and then uh, he wanted to get her back, but she said, you know, no. Uh, and then he ended up uh, killing himself, uh, as it says here in the last paragraph. Uh, it says, so on the 9th of February, 1977, Dave committed suicide by jumping off, uh, tower bridge into the icy cold water of the Thames. Uh, some people may think of Dave as a hero, but I knew that he, that was not the way he would want it to be. I thought Dave was a really great bloke and that's all that matters. So again, I don't know whose words these are. Uh, but I mean, yeah, like, like I said, you know, they told, tell the whole story of how they met Dave or whatever, uh, how they saw Dave. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing it's either probably JJ or Hugh, but either way. Um, yeah, I mean, just, <laughs> I mean, I love, you know, the tribute and Dave sounds like a character, uh, and it seems that, uh, the Stranglers really enjoyed characters and, uh, it's cool that they really, I mean, it is really cool that they made a tribute song for him. I mean, your first, you know, big number one fan or whatever. Uh, but yeah, it kind of, you know, it sucks. I mean, when you know a band like that and you're just like, oh, I want these guys to get big. I want them to, uh, you know, I don't know, you have that bond and then somebody, you know, and then other friends come along as they get bigger and they feel a connection to the band and then they start getting, you know, friendly. Uh, you may feel <laughs> envious and be like, hey, I'm supposed to be telling the jokes to the band. I'm supposed to be buying them drinks. I'm supposed to be, you know, all the stuff that Dave was doing. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's just, you know, it, it sucks that, you know, he ended his life, like jumped off the bridge. And I mean, <laughs> the song is pretty, I mean... <sighs> Again, I guess like the end of the thing said there, the end of the paragraph, Dave would not want to be remembered as a, as a hero. Uh, and I mean, I don't think that Dave would probably want the band to, you know, write a, I guess, you know, kind of a sappy tune or whatever. This was not really <laughs> sappy. I mean, uh, with the whole, I'm not going to cry. I bet he hit that water high. I guess he lost control and welcomed into the night. Uh, and, you know, it goes on. But, you know, it, it's very kind of dark. And, uh, you know, there's, you know, a certain way that they did this tribute to him and uh, it was the stranglers way and uh i mean but with the, like the first verse here you know dave was from out of town manchester's likely to had read desade to marks more read than me and you so you know i read a lot of books apparently you know uh definitely more than me i don't read too often um uh more yeah uh scaffolding pays good bread 
Uh, it pays for drugs and kicks, yeah. Uh, Dave only had one love, so I guess that's referencing his wife there, who was Brenda, that was her name. Uh, had no real need for chicks, because he had Brenda. Dave was so far ahead, but now he's dead. And I mean, <laughs> when I heard that, I was just like, oh, <laughs> well, geez, that was, kind of, that was an, uh, you know, abrupt. Uh, he was so far ahead, now he's dead. And then the whole, I'm not going to cry, but he had that water high. We jumped into the, you know, into the water from the bridge. Guess he lost control. It was too much for him. Uh, what were his thoughts that night? I mean, these are the questions that you think about when, you know, uh, someone you know or whatever, anyone you hear about that, you know, kills himself. Uh, what were their final thoughts? Thoughts? What were they thinking? Um, well, obviously, what were, you know, they're thinking about dying, probably. Um, but, you know, what, you know, what was going on in their mind? Uh, what could you have said to them uh, to not make them jump or whatever? Um, anyway, and then goes on. Uh, what were his thoughts at night? The river Thames is Thames is cold. It keeps on flowing, but it left Dave alone. It just kept flowing on. Uh, so, you know, everything just keeps going. There's city sickness here, but now he's dead. Uh, the, the part, you know, the, but now he's dead. is just so, uh, <laughs> it's just so, you know, again, I said abrupt, but it's just so, I don't know. It makes it, you know, it's real. It just makes it real. It's just, a, but now he's dead. It's so, it's, it's just a fact. It's just a hard fact. And, uh, anyway, and then the last verse here, which is pretty, uh, I guess the, I don't know, the the one that says the most, I guess you could say, late night, a street in the west of the city, there was a place where he lost himself, strange feelings that he feel there, strange people that he meet there, angry sounds that he hear there, like the howling of, it says bulls here, but I did, apparently somebody said it's wolves, um, I saw it as a comment, so anyway, I don't know if it's bulls or wolves, but either way, he heard some howling, I mean, I feel like wolves would make more sense, anyway, um, so yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, he had some troubles, uh, like I said, he had the whole, uh, I think he, I think it was, uh, schizophrenia is what he had or something like that, that, uh, the quote said that I read there a little bit from, um, but yeah, Dave, I guess, you know, the Strangler's first big fan and, uh, you know, every, and then kind of fell apart and, uh, I mean, yeah, it's a sad story. Good Lord. Uh, but again, I guess, you know, Dave wouldn't want to be remembered as a hero, as they said, uh, he was just a fan and then. It all went downhill, and I'm sure the Stranglers, I mean, yeah, I was just, they immortalized him here. And uh, and they put him, you know, this record's on, or this song is on a, you know, probably their best record or whatever. I mean, you know, one of their top records. Uh, no More Heroes, I mean, that I've heard so much about that in the comments uh, since I've reacted to the band. Uh, so, yeah, it's just... I don't know. I didn't expect all this uh, for Dagenham Dave. Again, like I said, I listen. I listened to a Morrissey's song, uh, and that was kind of a sad one, you know, as well. Actually, thinking back to it, watching the video for Morrissey's uh, Dagenham Dave. At the end of the video, his wife leaves him, uh, but it never shows Dave, you know, killing himself. Um, so maybe there is a little bit of a connection. I did see that, you know, apparently Morrissey didn't really see it or didn't try to make a connection. That's what I was told. Um, but I don't know if there's more to it or what. But uh, thinking about the video, I mean, I remember his wife left him at the end of it. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah. And again, it was kind of like he, uh, the Dave in that video uh, was kind of obs maybe obsessed with Morrissey or something. And so maybe here it's talking about now how he was kind of obsessed with the Stranglers. And at the end of it, uh, you know, his wife left him and then everything kind of fell apart. And it was kind of just, you know, poor Dave. Uh, here is just, yeah kind of the, yeah, I was just kind of making that connection as we speak. So yeah, anyway, yeah, my goodness. I didn't know if it was going to connect or what, but there we go. Anyway, thanks for watching, I guess. Uh, thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting. Uh, you know, shout out to Dagenham Dave um, <laughs> and uh, Brenda as well. And uh, obviously, you know, they could see the talent in the Stranglers, and that's pretty freaking cool. So anyway, thanks again for watching. Uh, thank you for all the support, and I'll talk to you folks again soon.